Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman for the National Public Diplomacy Directorate here in the office of the Prime Minister. It's Tuesday, the 22nd of October. We're in the midst of the festival of Sukkot, so Chag Sameach, Moadim Lesimcha. Please put your questions in the chat together with your news outlet. I've got a couple of uh, items to share with you just before that. Uh, on our fallen soldiers, sadly, uh, this morning, the IDF cleared for publication tragic news of a fallen Israeli soldier. IDF casualties since the start of this war have unfortunately risen to 750. Staff Sergeant Yishai Mann was 21 years old from Mitzbe Yericho. He fell during an operational vehicle accident adjacent to Gaza. The achievements of the military campaign are many. But this war for Israel's survival has exacted a very heavy price. Our hearts are with the bereaved families. Our soldiers are fighting boldly and bravely to bring back our hostages and eliminate the terrorist threat to the citizens of Israel. May our fallen be blessed and be remembered in our hearts always. Next, uh, an operational update. Uh, firstly, in Gaza, in the last half hour, the Israeli Defense Forces have released the names of 18 Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists eliminated in a strike on Thursday. The terrorists were operating inside, inside a command and control center embedded inside a former school, not a current school, a former school, the Abu Hassan School in northern Gaza. Their names and their ranks and their positions are on the IDF telegram feed for there, there to be seen. Next to Lebanon, as of 3 p.m. today, that's just half an hour ago, 80 rockets, missiles and drones have been fired by Hezbollah terrorist organization into Israel just today alone. Uh, this morning, I myself was in a synagogue uh, next door to where I live. I had my lulav and etrog in hand. At 7.43 a.m., the air raid siren rang out. Your heart sinks. I ran home to get my kids into the shelter. I live just next door. An enormous boom erupted overhead as, thank God, the Iron Dome took out the Hezbollah rocket. After 10 minutes in the shelter with my family, I returned to the synagogue. The IDF will continue to defend the state of Israel and all of its people against the threat posed by the Hezbollah terrorist organization. In southern Lebanon, IDF have just this afternoon released details of our limited localized targeted ground raids based on precise intelligence inside southern Lebanon. Two terrorists from Hezbollah's Radwan force armed with an RPG Missile and rifles uh, fired at IDF troops from within a building. The terrorists, the terrorists were eliminated. That footage is also available on the IDF telegram feed. Troops located and destroyed a weapons storage facility where an underground tunnel shaft was located. Also dozens of RPG missiles, dozens of them. Uh, mortar shells, military vests and other combat equipment belonging to the terrorists. In another raid, a launcher with four missiles ready to be fired, primed to be fired towards our northern Israeli communities were uh, located and destroyed. IDF will continue to operate against Hezbollah to prevent another October the 7th style uh, invasion in our north. Now an update from Kogat and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. On the vaccination campaign, firstly, yesterday was the third day of the second round of the polio vaccination campaign inside southern Gaza. A total of 259,299 children under 10 were vaccinated against polio in southern Gaza by 596 teams. Uh, there are still children who have not received the second round of the vaccine in southern Gaza. So. After meeting World Health Organization and UNICEF officials, COGAT has extended to a fourth day of, of uh, vaccinations to take place today, Tuesday. Now, on humanitarian aid, 
uh, going into Gaza. Uh, yesterday, Sam Rose of UNRWA told CNN that, and I quote, nothing is getting into Gaza. Now, Kogat has confirmed this to be untrue. Of course, UNRWA being a front for Hamas, uh, Sam Rose knows this very, very well to be untrue. Kogat confirms that more than half a million tons of aid on over 26,000 trucks has entered Gaza since May. Three entry points of aid are fully operational. Kerem Shalom, where aid is going in constantly. Uh, by the way, Sam Rose, it's also where 600 trucks of aid are awaiting the hapless United Nations to pick it up on the Gazan side of the Kerem Shalom crossing. Here's Sam. This is an actual picture of the 600 truckloads of aid just waiting for you to pick it up together with other colleagues from the United Nations to distribute it to those in need inside Gaza. Now, Kogat makes clear that just because UNRWA isn't logistically capable of bringing in and picking up aid does not mean it doesn't happen with other organizations. The Erez crossing is open and operational as usual. Gate 96, which serves as a bypass entry point, also operates regularly. We constantly urge the UN to upscale the number of trucks that enter Gaza through, through there. It's abundantly clear now that UNRWA can't fulfill its self-proclaimed title of being the humanitarian backbone of Gaza. Sam Rose, please don't go around spreading falsehoods to cover up your own inefficiency. Israel will continue facilitating humanitarian aid uh, and responses across Gaza, and you can get all of these details on Israel's humanitarian efforts on Kogat's website. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now take your questions in the chat. Uh, please uh, don't forget to add your outlet. Okay, first question uh, from uh, Joel Pollock from Breitbart News. Uh, firstly, you say that you asked that the director of the Al Sahel uh, Hospital in Beirut denied that there was a vault underneath the building. Can Israel offer any uh, other evidence other than that what, which the IDF shared yesterday uh, in its videos? Uh, thank you for that question, Joel. The IDF yesterday, as you say, and Daniel Hagari uh, last night, shared pretty compelling evidence of the vaults of gold and cash which are kept in Nasrallah's bunker underneath uh, that hospital. Unfortunately, we've seen a similar um, uh, phenomenon in Gaza with uh, Hamas um, terror tunnels and uh, their network underneath uh, hospitals uh, inside Gaza. The directors of the hospitals always, while they believe that uh, uh, Hamas or Hezbollah uh, can do them harm, will always maintain that line. But um, the IDF and uh, Daniel Hagari have been pretty comprehensive in the evidence which they've shared. Uh, it's comprehensive evidence. Um, it is uh, visual evidence as well. Uh, and it's on uh, the IDF uh, Telegram feed, which I would encourage you to take a look at for that comprehensive evidence. Uh, next, you ask, critics uh, say that hitting Hezbollah's financial institutions, Israel is also hurting institutions that provide microfinance and charity. Uh, how would Israel uh, respond? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Uh, Hezbollah, at, in, together with other terrorists around the world, will always say that their fundraising efforts are uh, charitable. They are, of course, not. They are uh, specifically to pay for their terrorist uh, activity. No one should fall for this uh, ruse. The IDF has made clear, uh, and you can see it again on their uh, Telegram feed, uh, the numerous ways in which cash makes its way from Iran, from the, the leaders uh, of Iran, the regime in Iran, uh, via Syria into the financial institutions in, and in also the vaults uh, inside uh, Beirut. And also, and this money is used directly to pay for uh, Hezbollah terrorists. Uh, no one should fall for their nonsense about it being, um, you know, charitable. Uh, it's clearly uh, to support this terrorist organization. It's a key part of um, Israel's 
aims against Hezbollah to cut off that financial supply to prevent it rearming itself and prevent it distributing funds to the uh, Hezbollah terrorists. Uh, we've already heard from the Hezbollah terrorists that we've cut, captured. The IDF has shared with us that um, morale is extremely low. And part of the reason that morale is so low is because we are cutting off those funds uh, directly to Hezbollah terrorists. Uh, next question from Joel Pollock. Critics are accusing Israel of ethnic cleansing in its uh, operations in Jabalia and Beit Lahia in Gaza. How would you respond? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Joel. Um, let me put it this way, uh, Joel. There is no scenario in which Israel can live with Hamas being in any position of power inside Gaza. We will simply not allow it. The Prime Minister has spoken of the 23 of the 24 battalions uh, being having been shattered. So those pieces of that sh those shattered battalions together with the last battalion has coalesced around uh, Jabalia. We've made every effort to get out to get ordinary civilians out of harm's way. We're working very hard to get them out of harm's way. These, these are heartbreaking images of civilians uh, on the move. Again, we understand that fact, uh, but of course it's much better to get them out of harm's way than then to have them caught in the crossfire. The Hamas ter terrorist organization, despite the fact that we eliminated Yahya Sinwar, uh, and that was confirmed on Thursday evening, despite that fact, the remnants of Hamas they seek to they seem they seek to retain power. They seek to remain the authority inside Gaza. I say again, there is no scenario. Uh, the prime minister has made this crystal clear together with other ministers. There is no scenario where Hamas terrorists are allowed to remain in power inside Gaza. Um, Fourth question, uh, former President Donald Trump suggested to Al Arabiya TV that his Lebanese sources were telling him uh, were telling him that Israel needed to defeat Hezbollah. Is there a silent reservoir of support for uh, Israel in, in inside Lebanon? Uh, thank you uh, for that uh, question, uh, Joel. Um, the Prime Minister, uh, in his messages directly to the Lebanese people, uh, and the government have also made clear that the uh, Hezbollah terrorist organization, which has hijacked uh, Lebanon, uh, is a minority in that country. And the majority of the country uh, are not Hezbollah supporters. And the prime minister made a direct appeal to the Lebanese people. And I think that is starting to be represented in the comments coming from Lebanese leaders. They understand that because Iran is behind Hezbollah, every place, the Iranian regime, every place that Iran gets involved in a country becomes a failed state. I think the best example of that is uh, Lebanon. Um, Hezbollah are stealing the money of the Lebanese people. They are diverting it to their terrorist forces. Uh, the Iranian regime are stealing the money of the Iranian people and diverting it towards uh, terrorist forces. Uh, IDF have recently shared the $50 million in cash, which goes uh, very frequently, uh, every month if I'm not mistaken, from Tehran uh, to um, Hezbollah. We're putting an end to that fact because exactly as uh, you say, we believe that the majority of Lebanese uh, are not in favor of, of Hezbollah. Our battle is against Hezbollah and not against Lebanese civilians. We want to push Hezbollah back behind the Litani River, make sure they have no military force between uh, our northern border, southern Lebanon, and the Litani River to ensure that a UN Resolution 1701 is, for the first time, adhered to. Uh, next question is from David Clement at the News Forum. Do you have any comment in response to the director of the Sahel General Hospital who is denying that the hospital has used, uh, used Hezbollah gold and cash? Thank you for that question, David. I believe I answered that uh, in the previous uh, questions. Uh, that is common. We've become used to that, of these hospital directors denying uh, this fact. Um, uh, just to be clear, the IDF has made clear that it has no, it will not take any action um, against uh, the hospital uh, for, for, it, for fear of um, 
doing any any damage to the hospital and, and the patients which are being served there. But uh, Daniel Hagari made crystal clear last night uh, with photographs uh, and also uh, the tunnel network and also the vaults, uh, Nasrallah's gold, which was uh, there. You know, ask yourself this question, how it is that uh, Sinwar and Nasrallah and these other uh, dastardly terrorist leaders were all multi-millionaires. It wasn't their own money, it was their people's money which they siphoned off for their own benefit. Uh, and the IDF has made clear where that money is. And um, as we degrade Hezbollah, we feel that Lebanese people, which are already, will become more and more willing to speak out against this uh, terrorist force, which has brought nothing but misery to that country. Again, it is Iran behind it. Uh, next question um, from uh, Begum Tevik. Uh, Begum, could you share with me your news outlet uh, before uh, I take your question? Um, and next question is from um, uh, Louis Baudouin Larman from uh, AFP, Agence France Presse. Uh, Israel has accused Hezbollah of keeping money in a bunker underneath the Beirut Sal Hospital. Could you elaborate on that, please? I think I've uh, dealt with that question, uh, and the IDF gave a comprehensive uh, reasoning uh, together with their evidence uh, last night, and you can get that from the Telegram feed. Uh, Leo Soraka from the Washington Post. Is the Israel sorry the Israeli media is currently reporting that the drone uh, that the drone indeed hit um, the Prime Minister's uh, house in Kisaria. Can you uh, confirm uh, that fact? Uh, thank you uh, for that question, uh, Lior. Um, let me just, um, on, on that point of that uh, Hezbollah drone uh, strike. Um, now, the uh, attempt by Iran's proxy Hezbollah to assassinate the prime minister uh, it's clearly a grave mistake. Uh, it, it will, of course, not deter Israel from continuing our just war against our enemies in order to uh, get a better future for all the people in this region. Now, the Prime Minister's uh, made clear uh, to Iran, which, of course, uh, backs Hezbollah and its proxies in its axis of evil, he said very, very clearly that anyone who tries to harm Israel's citizens will pay a heavy price. We will continue to eliminate the terrorists and those who dispatch them. We will bring our hostages home from Gaza and we will return our citizens who live in our northern communities uh, close to the border. We will return them safely to their homes. Israel is determined to achieve all of our war objectives and change the security reality in our region for generations to come. It'll be victory first and then uh, peace. This is not something we're doing uh, to get peace for uh, another 18 months before the next round with Hezbollah. This is to end the threat of Hezbollah on our northern border. Together we will fight, the Prime Minister's made clear, and with God's help, together we will win. Now, just yesterday, Leo, I can share with you that the French President Emmanuel Macron and uh, Greek Prime Minister... Uh, Mitsotakis called uh, the Prime Minister uh, and um, strongly condemned the attempt uh, on his life. Uh, the Italian Foreign Minister Antonio Tajani, who also met with the Prime Minister in Jerusalem yesterday, uh, did the same, as did the Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer, who also spent, uh, 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 also condemned uh, the attack, as did uh, five members of US Congress with whom the Prime Minister also met with yesterday. The uh, former U.S. President Donald Trump and also British Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer also expressed their shock to the Prime Minister over the uh, attack against him. And also um, the U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Mike Johnson also called uh, the Prime Minister to issue a spe special condemnation. Uh, I hope that makes that clear. Um, next question I can see here is from um, uh, Dr. Abby Korb from uh, SWC. Uh, is there any update on the revised hostage negotiation talks as well as anything to come of the SodaStream uh, CEO offer of $100,000 for live hostages as his offer is set to expire 
uh, tomorrow. Uh, thank you for that question, um, uh, Dr. Corb. The Prime Minister uh, made, again, made very, very clear our position when it comes to the hostages. And they can be cut, they can be, so we, we can put them into two points. Uh, number one, our 101 hostages are the, our highest priority. The Prime Minister made that absolutely clear. They are our highest uh, priority to get them home. They need to be released now. And the second point which the Prime Minister made very clearly is that we are going systematically through the leadership of Hamas. We have had tremendous success in decapitating this uh, dastardly terrorist organization. From Sinwar to Daif to the other leaders of Hamas. The Prime Minister said that if our hostages are released without any further harm, the Hamas terrorists will be able to live, leave with their lives. Now that is a clear offer which stands clear today. Uh, the Hamas terrorists will be able to leave with their lives if they release our hostages. That is our offer uh, to the terrorists. And yes, of course, we are always in favor of our negotiations, but we believe that the elimination of Sinwar should focus the minds somewhat of the Hamas terrorists holding our people. They need to be brought home now in order for their lives to be spared. Uh, finally, a question from uh, Begum Tevik from Istanbul Now TV. There have been discussions circulating about a possible bomb attack on Iran. Could you provide an update on the current status of, of this situation? Um, thank you for that question. Uh, Istanbul Now would like me to share with uh, the world uh, Israel's um, uh, plans to defend itself uh, against Iran. Uh, you won't be surprised, uh, Begum, if I don't uh, take you up on that uh, kind offer. But let me speak in a, a general sense about Iran, because the Prime Minister just yesterday actually was quoting his father, the historian Ben Sion uh, Netanyahu, who said that the existence of the Jewish people has been put into question by the threat to annihilate us from uh, Iran. Uh, they say it very openly. Uh, it's declared uh, very openly. There's a square inside Tehran uh, which counts down, counts down to the demise of this country. Now, on the one hand, uh, the Prime Minister said that Iran vows that soon Zionism will be destroyed. On the other, the people of Israel are showing the world how a nation should behave when faced with an existential threat. And the Turkish government would do well to hear, hear this as well. We, Israel, the government and the people, stare unflinchingly at the danger. We calmly consider what needs to be done and what can be done. And we are ready to enter the fray when the chances of success are reasonable. That is a powerful stance that requires tremendous inner strength. The people of Israel show today that they have such inner strength. And this leads to, uh, as the Prime Minister said, uh, this clear belief that our people will roll back this danger and this threat to our very existence. Okay, I think that is the last uh, question uh, here today. Okay, so let me update you uh, for the next uh, few days. It is a another uh, Jewish festival, uh, Simchat Torah, uh, the anniversary actually, the Hebrew date anniversary of the uh, October the 7th massacre. It's in English, it's called the Rejoicing of the Law. It's when uh, many, many Jewish people come together and uh, celebrate uh, the restarting of uh, reading of our Torah, the uh, Bible, uh, and there'll be much dancing and merriment. Um, Hezbollah tried to destroy this country exactly a year ago on this festival. Uh, they sought to make us stop dancing uh, and carrying out the traditions of our people, which are generations old, thousands of years old. Uh, they have failed in that mission. 
Hezbollah is in tatters, but this nation is stronger and more united and more determined to secure our future in this land. So there'll be no briefing uh, tomorrow. Uh, the next briefing will be uh, next week. Uh, so in the meantime, please do stay safe and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.